Hello friends and welcome to Figure Study, where I'm back in front of the camera again because the temperature has cooled down just a little bit and I feel less horrendously gross all the time. Whether or not this is still gross, I'll leave that up to you to decide, but it is an improvement, take my word for it. So today we're taking a look at this. I'm not 100% sure what this is. At a glance, it looks like the X9's Richtofen, or Richtofen, or however you pronounce it. It might be uh, the site that I bought it from, Robotoybase, they had it listed as the X9 Richtofen. It comes with accessories that look like the accessories you get with Richtofen. It, the stand even has the X9 branded on it. But the figure itself has some telltale signs that make it seem like it might actually be a knockoff. It might specifically be the Art of Duplicates knockoff, which from what I understand is an incredibly good knockoff of the actual figure. The only real differences are things like certain pins are black instead of silver, the eyes are a little bit darker blue, and the windows on the jet mode are like a solid black color or a really, really dark black color as opposed to being like a smoky translucent plastic like they are in the original figure. So yeah, this has all of those telltale signs, but the accessories are clearly DX9 accessories. Like, they have the same quality. They're not as kind of downgraded as the uh, Art of Duplicates knockoff accessories looked. And again, the stand is DX9 branded, which we'll see when we look at the accessories. So yeah, um, I think the figures a knockoff, and the accessories are actually the X9 accessories. I don't understand how that happens, and honestly I don't care, because it's an incredibly good figure that, from what I understand, is practically indistinguishable, at least quality-wise, from the official one, or original one, not official. And it cost me like 50 bucks total, counting shipping, to get all of this. And uh, yeah, I'd say that's worth it. Anyway. I think I've gone on long enough and I've been interrupted by cicadas constantly, so let's keep going. To start, here we've got, uh, I'm just gonna call him Power Glide, I guess, because I honestly don't know whether this is Richtofen or not, actually, but yeah, uh, Power Glide's jet mode looks great. It's like a larger interpretation of the original toy. I love this. I actually have a particular attachment to Power Glide because his toy, G1 toy, was one of my first Transformers figures. Not the first, that's still reserved for G1 Bumblebee, but he was one of my first. And I had that toy for such a long time. I eventually got rid of it because I'm a fool, but this feels like such a great modernization of that. It hides the robot mode incredibly well. There are a few telltale signs, like these bits along the sides here, which are actually the inner robot thighs. You can see a bit of that gray. There's, uh, well, for the rest of the jet mode, I feel like, I keep saying jet, it's probably not a jet, but for the rest of the plane mode, it's uh, pretty nice, pretty solid, pretty non-robotic from the top. From the bottom, you do get a little bit just right in here, the area that will become the chest. And the arms are kind of just hanging down, but at the same time, I feel like when you're looking at them from this angle, they just kind of look like underwing junk that you'd see on a plane like this. As you can also see, his gun is mounted underneath there, but we can take that off. Just pegs on right in there. As you can probably tell, I did add some Reaper labels. I put one on the nose right there, and then one underneath here to be uh, more visible in robot mode. I think he's supposed to be an A10, and uh, this looks like an A10 that's bright red. Paint and detail-wise, there's not a ton of paint, I don't think, in the plane mode. I mean, there is some, like these bits along the side that are sort of meant to mask the inside of the robot thighs, the uh, silver around the intakes up there, and also the kind of gunmetal for the intakes. Black up there, uh, there is some silver on the undersides here that's on the arms. Mostly red plastic, from what I understand. Uh, I think maybe the dome up here is also painted, because I think the whole thing is cast in this darker translucent plastic and they just painted over the top. But yeah, not a whole lot for this mode specifically, which is fine. I think what you've got looks great. It evokes the character in the original toy pretty darn well.
Moving on to size comparisons, here he is with the standard deluxe squad. And uh, yeah, if this is supposed to be an A10, it's definitely not to scale with the car. It's still bigger than a deluxe. For the heck of it, since he is sort of Masterpiece-ish, Masterpiece Minibot, I guess, here he is next to Masterpiece G2 Sideswipe. And here he is with the duck tank. Alright, so before getting into the transformation, I'm just going to tuck away his landing gear. So this one in the middle here just pops up like so. The ones on the sides of the wings just flip up and tuck inside these little boxes. And then on the underside, this one in the front is probably the most complicated one to do because you have to pop this way. Yeah. You have to pop this door open, and that's more for robot mode, but you pop the door open, and push that in, and then close the door again, and now all of his landing gear are tucked away. And now we can start the transformation proper. And here we have Richtofen, or Richtofen, or whatever, in his robot mode, and this is a really neat looking power glide. I really like this. As I said, I had the original toy, and it was one of my favorites. Maybe not my favorite, but I did mess around with them a lot. And just having this is so much fun. It's such a nifty transformation. The only real gripe I have with this engineering, I think, has more to do with the fact that this is probably the Art of Duplicates knockoff rather than the official, or I keep saying official, the original DX9 figure, in that the section of the chest that pulls out to rotate, it, it's a little bit rough to pull out, and it pulls out a little bit, like, it doesn't pull out far enough. It's just a little bit too close to the torso when you rotate it around, like, it's a little bit tricky to get it going sometimes. Other than that, this is just a fantastic figure. It's a lot of fun, it looks great, the transformation's cool. I really like how the, I think they're stabilizers, I think. Whatever the fins and wings are on the back, like the tail section, I like how those curl around and kind of make his feet, or toes rather, they just kind of cover his foot. It's a really clever design. The proportions are really nice, and I like the fact that the turbines or engines or whatever kind of fold around the backs of the cabs. Like, it doesn't completely remove the kibble, there is definitely some kibble still back here, but it cleans up the profile, especially from the front, really, really nicely. As with the plane mode, there's a lot of nice little molded detail in there. Uh, there's, again, the paint's somewhat limited. You just kind of get a little bit of silver on the outer thighs, a little bit of silver on the forearms and the shoulders but I'm totally fine with that. And of course you got the detailing in the pelvis area and the face. If we open up the chest, there you can see the standard for masterpiece and masterpiece style figures where you've got a single episode reference worked into a toy, either through an accessory or through some kind of gimmick. In this case, it's the, I think the thing showing that like Power Glide has a heart because he's, really mean to this woman who's really obsessed with him for some reason. It's got it. Speaking of, uh, let's talk about those accessories. So, we saw the gun, but I'm just gonna bring that back. There is Power Glide's gun, 
and it looks like Power Glide's gun. There's no place to really store it in his robot mother, and I'm going to close that. <laughs> but uh, you can pop it into his hand, because, you know, gun. So now Power Glide is ready to shoot some cons, as all Autobots are. He also comes with his girlfriend, whose name I forget, but I believe this is the DX9 accessory, because from what I've seen in the videos, the Art of Duplicates version of this little figurine is not painted as clearly. It's a lot more mushy and stuff in the paintwork here. It's actually pretty well done. There's like some nice definition between the collar and the skin tone and the dress and the hair. So yeah, I think this might be the DX9 figurine. I don't know. But there's that. It is what it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's masterpiece style G1 reference stuff. Anyway, here is the stand, and this is from I've seen from videos the standard DX9 stand where you've got the kind of peg at the base that can swivel around a bit, and then the rest of it you actually have to pull apart and rotate because there are these like teeth in here that lock the stand into place when you rotate it. So you can't just spin it, you have to pull it apart and then squish it back together once you've rotated it how you want, and that will lock it together really, really securely. It also has the little square thing on top for the landing gear for the jet mode. Jet, I keep saying jet for the plane mode, and uh, I did not show that off. I probably should have. I will add in some photos here so you can see this is what the plane looks like on the stand, and yeah, it works. Using this in robot mode, eh, not so much. You can fold down the landing gear and you can kind of do that. The stand does come, at least this specific one, came with uh, two extra bits for the top of the stand, but they don't work with this guy, I don't think. Like, they're, they're pegs that you attach to the bit here, and they peg in somewhere, but he doesn't have peg holes on him for stands, so I don't get that. Lastly, there's the alien mask, which is, again, from a G1 cartoon episode. I don't remember if it's the same one as the, the lady figurine. It's probably not, but you've got that. And it looks good. The paint's nice for what there is. It's just got the red on the eyes, but it seems pretty clean. And to attach that, you just have to rotate his face back around. So you kind of need to get... It's tricky to get going, but uh, you basically need to get a nail to hook into the side of his faceplate. Then you can rotate his face back around so that you get this little blank space. And like the gun, there's this slot where his face used to be and this kind of peg on the back of the mask. The gun has a similar peg. And you just peg the mask into the slot on uh, what used to be his face, and now there's this silly thing going. And as I've seen many people do, even though I've never seen the cartoon, I can, I can at least understand the idea of, like, you know, silly alien invasion movie type thing, and want to have zombie alien power glide. You can do that. Now for the head and face, that is very clearly Power Glide. I feel like the face for Power Glide is relatively indistinct, although the kind of grayish face with the silver faceplate and like the kind of three flat surface faceplate with the blue eyes is maybe somewhat distinctive for Power Glide. Of course, the most distinctive thing is his cone-shaped head, like not as pronounced as the actual cone heads, but that's... That's a very power glide head, especially also the little cockpit looking thing on top there. I don't know if it's actually a cheat or if it's meant to reference something else. Yeah, he's got his little bump on his forehead there. The eyes, I believe, are a darker blue than they are on the original DX9 figure, but I don't have the original DX9 figure to do a comparison with, so I couldn't really tell you how drastic the difference is between the two shades. Now, for the articulation, the head can turn left and right, and it can go all the way around, though I don't really see a need for that. Uh, the neck can go up and down for the transformation, like just turtle up and down. 
and then you can look up and down a bit. It's not great, but it's enough. The arms go all the way around. And I'm holding back here because these little clips here that keep the wings in place, it's not that difficult to knock them out of place. Like, they'll hold, but when you're moving the arms, you can potentially move this back, and if you move it back, that can unhook itself. So, I'm just holding that in place. There is outward motion, which if you get the shoulder bit out of the way, you can go much further up. Then you get bicep swivels, which are really really tight on this guy. Though they seem to be loosening up now. Maybe I just need to mess around with them a little bit. For the elbow, you get a lot <laughs> due to the transformation, but still, that's pretty great. There is wrist rotation, and it goes pretty much all the way around. The only problem is this little plate thing on the forearm here that sticks out gets in the way of the thumb. So if you rotate this back, it'll stop here because the thumb will bump into it, but you can rotate the hand all the way around to there, going the other way. So it's the rotation is fine. And then you get the uh, masterpiece style fingers where you've got the three grouped together and then the one finger kind of off on its own. It does not look great for pointing. Despite how this guy transforms, he actually has a waist swivel, which is really surprising, but appreciated. Got hip skirts on the back, or butt flaps, I guess, that are really stiff, but go up a bit of a ways. There are hip skirts that go up, and then the skirts in the front that go up, and that will uh, clear up space for the legs, as they tend to do. So the legs can go forward about that far, back to about there. They can go out pretty far and hold up pretty well. There is a thigh swivel, and there you can see the sides of the plane, the insides of the thighs there. There's also a swivel just below the knee, and speaking of knees, the knees can bend to about 90 degrees, and that bend is not reliant on this kibble. It just stops at 90 degrees, so if you bend it, like, it stops there. Having that in the way is not going to affect it at all. And then down at the feet, you get a little bit of backward and forward motion, mostly for the transformation. Uh, you can wiggle the heel up and down very slightly, but that's again mostly for the transformation, and you want to have it down when you transform into robot mode, otherwise it's going to be leaning back. And then you do get some ankle tilts. So articulation is pretty good on this guy. Now for size comparisons, here he is with the standard deluxe squad, and as you can see, he's, uh, again, a little bit bigger than a deluxe. Probably not to scale, but then again, the minibots are... I mean, who even cares about scale in G1 cartoon, honestly? We've been doing a G1 watch party on the Discord server for the past couple of weeks, and one of the many things I've been discovering is that people who gripe about scale for G1 referential figures must not remember the cartoon that well, because the scale in that show is all over the friggin' place. Anyway, he looks good. Here he is with Masterpiece G2 Sideswipe. Again, I freaking love that figure. So you can see how he measures up next to an official Masterpiece Carbot. For a little teaser of our next video, well, this is one I'm really interested in because this is a series that I've just recently gotten into, and uh, I don't want to say I've gotten into it super hard, but uh, it, I have been bitten by the bug a little bit. But uh, yeah, next video we're taking a look at this. I'm excited. And here he is with the duck tank. And that is going to do it for what may or may not be DX9's Richtofen, or Richtofen, or whatever. Their power play. And if it's not DX9's figure, then it's the uh, Art of Duplicates knockoff of that figure. Either way, this thing is great. I had been wanting to get my hands on this figure, one of the versions of this figure, for... Pretty much ever since the DX9 one came out, however long ago that was, I think it was like three years ago now, maybe four, maybe five, jeez. Uh, all I know is it came out several years ago and I've been wanting it and have been holding off because various reasons. And you know, as much as I like this figure, Power Glides, I wouldn't call him a heavy hitter. So I was just kind of like, yeah, I'll, I'll hold off for now, get it later, and then of course 
the X9 suddenly became very difficult to find figures for and they weren't really reissuing anything. This figure is a lot of fun. It looks great. The transformation is actually pretty fun. There are little elements to it, in particular that chest pop out in rotation that are a little bit like, ugh. But nothing that I'd call painful or anything that makes me want to actively avoid transforming the figure. I could not care less about most of the accessories, though I will say the little alien mask, as ridiculous as it is, there is a certain level of charm to it when I put it on him for just photos or whatever. But uh, yeah, this and the other accessories, basically everything except his gun is just going to be going back in the closet once I uh, get this video done. But yeah, if you're looking for a masterpiece-ish power glide, I would highly recommend this. Whether you can find the DX9 original figure or the Art Duplicates figure, I'd say get it because it's great. And if you do want to get one of your own, I'm pretty sure Robo Toy Base still has this guy up for sale. It's the DX9 Richtofen No Box. I think they call it like Factory Runoff or something like that. The photo is basically this guy with the accessories next to a green cutting mat for some reason. But uh, yeah, if you want to get this guy for a really good price, I highly recommend checking out Robo Toy Base and searching for this guy because totally worth it. Even if this is a knockoff, this is a great knockoff. And that is enough of what I think about whatever this is. What do you all think of this guy or the original DX9 figure? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. I am still doing the Patreon thing, which is going to be an ongoing thing for the foreseeable future, but uh, there's just a $1 tier. That's the only tier I've got, because it's the only thing I could think of justifying. And uh, becoming a patron nets you basically just access to Patreon stuff, and that's mostly like some behind-the-scenes stuff every now and then, some kind of random updates, and also it gets you early access to videos that I've put up. So, like, patrons are going to be seeing this video a couple of days before it actually goes live. If you want to check it out, feel free to check it out. There's going to be a link for that in the description and also at the end part. But thank you everybody for watching, and remember, art is more than meets the eye. Also, I'm, I am really legitimately super excited to talk about this next figure, because that's going to be fun.